All right, guys, welcome to Flavio Rihanna's anime show. I'm your host, Flavio Rihanna, brought to you by Four Corner Sports. All right, guys, so we had USC Vegas 43, one of the most star studded, most illustrious cards of the year. Just kidding, guys, because uh, I'll be honest with you guys, I really didn't watch the prelims. Uh, I wasn't feeling it so much. I know people were saying Lupi Godinez, Lupi Godinez, you know, she's fighting and stuff like that. But for um, making three fights in 43 days, just didn't see the hype in watching the prelims. But I did watch the main card, all right? And I know this was a main event featuring uh, Ketlin Vieira versus uh, Misha Tate. And just discussing the the main event. Look, guys, I'm a I'm a fan of uh, Misha Tate. I've liked the way of style of fights, you know, her style of fights. I've rooted for her when she fought Ronda. All right, man. I know she came unsuccessful in both times. Okay, very happy when she ended up getting the winning the Bantamweight title over Holly Holm. Remember, Holly Holm ended up uh, defeating. Ronda, and then she ended up uh, losing the fight. I don't know if it was like the next fight over, or I can't remember exactly because it was a couple years ago. But she ended up uh, making uh, Holly Holm submit because Misha's style of fight was the kryptonite for Holly Holm, and Ronda's style of fight was, I'm sorry, um, Holly Holm's style of fight is was the kryptonite for Ronda Rousey. So Misha comes back uh, in July, faces Marion Renault. Uh, did she look impressive? I guess you could say she looked impressive in that fight because of the fact that she stepped away from the game for about what three, four years. Uh, her, her, her last fight before that was uh, against Raquel Pennington in UFC 205, and she ended up looking like she didn't want to be there and she wanted to step away from the game, and which she did. You know, she had a family. She's a mom now. I think a mom of two. And she comes into this fight against Kenton Vieto. She's on a mission to try to, you know, reclaim gold that she wants to show that, hey, you know what, that she's pretty good at what she does. And she's a very good fighter, in my opinion. But on this night was Caitlin Vieto. But I had some issues watching this main event, all right? Nothing like me, you know, watching it through my ESPN Plus account. But I had issues because, man, two things. One... Misha T. Misha T, you know, we know her as a grappler, as a wrestler, and stuff like that. And she can grind out victories, whether it's a three-round fight, it's a five-round fight. She has the ability to do it, okay? She didn't do that. She ended up taking more of a kickboxing approach, which is a head-scratcher for me because of the fact that we see Misha grapple. You saw her do it with uh, Marion Renault. You saw her do it in previous fights, Okay. And she wasn't able to do it this time. I felt like, you know, she should have at least tried to initiate it a little bit more. We saw it in the first round when, I don't know why Ketlin Vieto tried to shoot down for a takedown. And obviously she was unsuccessful for it. And that ended up costing her that uh, the first round. But we saw a little bit of that. And Caitlin Vieta in the past, you know, she has shown that she is not that great when she's on her back. She's not that great against wrestlers. And I felt like, you know, Misha really did have that advantage. But she just didn't use that tool in her arsenal which was something was more of a head scratcher than anything else and the other issue that i had with the main event was watching caitlin vieta fight because yes this lady has tools you know this 30 year old you know up and comer title contender she has the tools to actually you know do some damage but she didn't you know she has a great you know jab she has a great she could really do something with that combination, but she doesn't do anything else to follow up with the combination, which is something that was kind of frustrating to watch, watching this main event. The main event, I felt like it lacked any real highlights, which I'm not I'm not speaking as a, I'm some type of a casual, because I'm clearly not a casual fan, all right? I watch these fights, you know, for my enjoyment, but I also try to watch these fights to break it down. And then what I ended up seeing, re-watching the main event, I ended up watching Caitlin Vieta you know, leaving a lot of holes in her game where she just wasn't utilizing more of that striking. I don't know if she was restricting herself, if she was holding back a lot, you know, from uh, Misha Tate, or she saw something that we as the, you know, viewers didn't see. And what I just saw was like, hey, you know what? She could have fought, instead of just throwing a one-two punch, she could have done, you know, finish off the combo with another right hook or attack the body a little bit more, but she just didn't do that. I mean, yeah, she did piece up, what's it called, um, Misha Tate more into that fifth round, and in the fifth round, it was more visual than anything else, 
but I did see that Caitlin Vieira had the opportunity to finish her, and if she was more in that zone, all right, and if she took more of an approach, I'm not comparing her to this fighter, but if she took more of an approach like a, an Arena Donna, who is very, you know, notorious with her striking, all right, because she has a very good boxing pedigree in her background. If she took a little bit more of that approach in this fight against the uh, Amisha Tate, then we would have seen somebody, you know, knock out Amisha Tate inside of three rounds, but it, that just didn't happen whatsoever. Overall, it, w- it was a 25-minute, you know, fight. It was a fight, and uh, I ruled it as 49-46 to uh, Caitlin Vieira. Caitlin Vieira ended up, you know, doing, you know, what she needed to do. It wasn't a very impressive victory. It's one. It's not one of those uh, victories at a main event where we're gonna be where the UFC brass and be like, hey, you know what? We gotta have Vieta, you know, main event more of these fight nights or put her higher up on a pay per view card so fans can actually watch her. I think that she didn't lose any fans, but she definitely didn't gain any fans. For Misha T, I think it was more of a, a moral win for Misha T because she didn't get knocked out, but she showed that she's able to compete with some of these, you know, heavy hitters at 135. And the fact that she ended up lasting th- uh, 25 minutes with a Caitlin Vieta, who has a little bit more skills, in my opinion, than Misha T at this point in, in their prospective careers, shows that, you know what, that Misha T can, can hang in there. Now, what's next for both these ladies? Well, I personally think that you should probably just run it back in that rematch with Arena Donna versus uh, Caitlin Vieta. I think Caitlin Vieta didn't show anything that she's right there for a title fight. And Arena Donna, last time we ended up seeing her fight, you know, she fought against Holly Holm, which she just didn't look anything like an Arena Donna, you know, fighter that we have seen her fight in, in previous times. Um, I think that both these ladies do need a, a very good significant victory. I know Irene Donna did knock out Caitlin Vieta, but I think at this point in their careers, I don't see it. I don't see the, the problem on running it back and having to see whoever wins will just be at this, at this point, one fight away in a title eliminator fight, moving on for potentially a, a title fight. I know the title's going to be defended on uh, J- December 11th, but Amanda Nunes is going to defend her belt for the first time in two years against Juliana Pena, which that's the fight that I'm looking forward to because, you know, Amanda Nunes, she has struggled in the past against wrestlers, you know, a la your Alexis Davis and your, um, what's it called, Kat Zingano's. But, you know, this will be very important. If Caitlin Vieira can get a victory over Irene Adana, which that I feel like that should be the fight to make, then, you know, she puts, pushes herself one step closer, possibly fighting like GDR or Holly Holm to fighting for the belt, you know, and in that title eliminator, getting closer to that belt. Now for Misha Tate, for Misha Tate, it's very simple. I think you just, you know, make the fight happen between her and Aspen Ladd. Aspen Ladd is coming off two consecutive losses, one at 135, one at 145. I know she tore her ACL and she was out for one year, but there is some type of beef. There is some type of, you know, um tension between both these females because misha did make a comment about aspen you know cheating the scale and not making weight properly and whatever it is you know using the the towel trick to make it seem like as if she made weight i know aspen has had a difficult time making 135 i think maybe she might need to move to 145 but i feel like that's a, that's a fight to make at 135 if they can't make it at 135 they make it at a catch rate at 140 there, you know, that being, you know, Aspen will need to still cut a decent amount of weight, and Misha doesn't cut, doesn't need to cut a significant amount of weight because she has made it. Uh, I don't think she's ever missed weight in in her career, and, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But Misha has always made weight, from my understanding, and make uh, making the fight at 140, which is make it a little bit much easier for Misha not to cut so much weight. But Aspen will still need to cut weight because she does need to show that hey, you know what, cutting weight is part of the process of uh, fight in the UFC. Now, uh, co-main event, Kiesa versus Brady. Now, this is a fight I had circled because Kiesa is coming off of a loss against Vicente Luque. Uh, he was in that fight against Luque. He was more worried about positioning than trying to stop the what's it called the Darish choke on uh, Vicente Luque. And Vicente Luque ended up capitalizing on the Darish choke and then making Kiesa tap out. Now, Kiesa is taking the up and comer in Sean Brady, who hasn't lost. I believe he ended up coming into the fight 14 and 0. Last time he fought, he ended up beating up on uh, Jake Matthews. Now, the Philly kid, um, Sean Brady, comes in and immediately shows his wrestling. Uh, look, 
He also is a, good, is a good, if not a great wrestler, but for Brady to show his power, his presence, and to show that he can out-grapple Kiesa just really shows a lot. I, the first two rounds were pretty much, you know, the same thing. Kiesa, um, what's it called? Kiesa being on the floor, being dominated on the grappling of Brady. But then in the third round, we saw a little bit of an urgency from a Michael Kiesa where he showed that, you know what, that he needed to go for the kill, for the knockout. And he was hurting Sean Brady on the feet. And it just... And, it showed out there for the national public that, you know what, Sean Bray, as great of a grappler he is, he still needs to work on his striking. He still needs to work on his cardio because he looked gassed out in that uh, three-round war. And I believe if that would have been a main event, if that would have been a five-round fight, I would have, you know, Michael Chiesa would have ended up winning and he would have won, you know, either by a TKO stoppage or just by by the cards because Chiesa clearly won the third round. He ended up ending the round on top you know on top mount and just doing ground and pound and Kiesa was just gassed out Kiesa needs to really focus on his uh cardio moving on to the next fight but he um I'm sorry not Kiesa Brady needs to focus on his cardio going into the next fight but moving on forward uh Brady, Brady did win 29-28 winning the first two rounds and Kiesa winning the third round um what's next for Brady I think Brady definitely does deserve uh a little bit of a push but he just didn't get I I think that third round severely did damage him. So the fight that I wouldn't mind seeing uh, happen is prospect versus prospect at this point. Danny Rodriguez versus uh, Sean Brady. Danny Rodriguez is a is a t- <laughs> is a tough guy. He's very difficult to um, out muscle. He's very difficult to um, what's it called dominate. And Sean Brady has really good grappling, really good wrestling, and he can pretty much take you down to the floor. I would love to see that matchup a strike or a brawler versus striker. Sign me up for that matchup. As for Michael Chiesa, I think Chiesa's going to need to take a step back um, for Chiesa. I don't know, guys. I mean, you could maybe have him fight like Randy Brown. I know Randy Brown has got a victory over Jar- um, Jared Gooden. You could make that fight happen. You could put him against like Nico Price or your um, Chaos Williams, who's another one that's been wanting to have... Um, What's it called a, a fight inside the top 15. So those are fights that I would like to see for a, a Michael Chiesa. Um, and then last fight I wanted to talk to you guys about. And it was the starter. It was the main card opener. It was Adrian Yanez versus Davey Grant. This is the people's main event. This is the fight that I had circled you know, on my calendar for what's it called November 20th. And man oh man. As big of an Adrian Giannis fan as, as I was, I think I became more of an Adrian Giannis fan than I ended up um, ever imagining because of the fact that this was something that I love to see. I mean, Davy Grant is just as tough as they come, all right? This guy, last time we saw him, he ended up fighting Cheeto Vera, and I think he ended up going to the hospital for breaking a bone. This guy doesn't get, you know, this guy absorbs punches. He comes after you. He takes as many punches as possible. And he rather receive a punch and throw a punch than what's it called? Not receive one and then miss badly. But in the first two rounds, I've oh, I'm sorry, in the first round, Giannis was definitely utilizing the jab and he was controlling pace. Round two, I gave it to Davey Grant. All right. Um and then in round three. Oh no, I'm sorry, round two, I gave it to Adrian Giannis. More utilizing the jab. And then round three, um Grant ended up you know, coming out there with a sense of urgency and throwing like flying kicks, throwing more um, front kicks to the body, you know, attacking the leg. I mean, Grant should have been doing that more often because Giannis, you know, he kept on moving his head. He rolls with the punches, so he doesn't really absorb all these punches whatsoever. Um, but it was a little bit too late for him to utilize the leg kicks. Uh, you saw that uh, Grant ended up trying to t- go for a takedown. And didn't see the takedown defense, you know, in the previous fights for Adrian Giannis. But it showed, hey, you know what? This guy has takedown defense. He really stuffed that takedown. And, you know, Giannis is not a wrestler. He's a striker. He's a boxer. He has that boxing pedigree in his background, um, just like in Irene O'Donnell. But this guy, wow, man. I really love the the way that this guy, you know, throws his jab. He strikes. He ha- He's very quick on, on his feet. He's very, you know, quick with his hands. He has lightning fast hands. He throws great combinations, you know, and he doesn't use a lot of subtle movements. It's just boom, boom, and then back into the chamber. Boom, boom, back into the chamber. And that's what I love to see from Adrianas. Now, Adrianas ended up winning. Um, it was by split, decision, by split decision. I don't know what 
20 weeks the judge was looking at. He gave it 30-27 to Davy Grant. I, I could have easily scored maybe like round three. Uh, It was a bit, I mean, I could have scored round three for Davy Grant, but I gave it to Adrian Giannis. I had Adrian Giannis winning um 30-27 in my opinion. But it was fight of the night. I'm glad that Adrian Giannis won. Now, what's next? He said he wants to take some time off. He had a huge, uh, what's it called, cauliflower ear, a huge bubble on his ear that he had to had get like decompressed. Uh, what's next? Um, I don't know. I mean, there's rumors of him wanting to fight Sean O'Malley, or Sean O'Malley wanted to fight him. That's a fight that I would like, to, I wouldn't mind seeing. But I really want to see him fight Song Yudong. I think Song Yudong is a great puncher. He's a great striker. We have seen him fight before. He ended up fighting um, what's it called Julio Arce. I think it was like last week, if I'm not mistaken, and he ended up. You know, putting Arce's lights out. I would love to see Song versus uh, Adrian Giannis. I know Song is 23. Adrian, I think he's around my age, 28 years old. And two strikers, two hard punchers. You know, Adrian more of the boxer and and Song more of the power puncher. I would love to see that happen. I would love to see who gets the better of what. That would be another instant classic Adrian Giannis type of a fight. Another instant classic Song Yudong type of a fight. Where both guys are going to go at one another. And please UFC, make this fight happen. I would love to see it happen. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, Adrian Giannis definitely needs to stop even fighting at the apex. Got uh, The UFC definitely needs to start you know, promoting this kid more and more. And having him fight in front of a crowd because his fighting style, his fights can definitely erupt the crowd and crowds are going to love it. But yeah, guys, le- guys, let me know what you guys think. How do you feel about this card? Does Giannis need, Gian- should Giannis fight Song Yudong or should Giannis fight, uh, what's it called, Sugar Sean O'Malley? And what's next for both Caitlin Vieta and Misha Tate? Who should they fight? And give me your opinion on the main event. And so then, guys, I am Flav Oriana. Thank you for tuning in to Flav Oriana's MMA show. Please hit that like and subscribe button, guys. Really helps out the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace, guys, and have a good one.